how do I play the 2026 first robotics competition game, Rebuilt? Rebuilt is a super interesting game, combining elements and ideas from a whole bunch of past FRC games, including Aim High, Breakaway, Stronghold, Steamworks, Destination Deep Space, Infinite Recharge, and Rapid React. Keep in mind that all these things from past games are slightly different than they originally appeared or recombined in a different and novel way, as though they were recreated by archaeologists looking at past FRC games with incomplete information. This year, the field is split into thirds. Your alliance's third, a center third, and your opponent's third of the field. Thirds are split up by large structures consisting of the hub, bumps, and trenches. The hub is attached to two bumps and two trenches that are all connected together, separating one third from the next third. There's two of these assemblies on the field bounding that center third of the field. Inside the center third of the field is where you'll find the vast majority of the game pieces this year that we are calling fuel. On your alliance wall, there are also human player stations called outposts and a climbing structure called the tower. The tower is somewhat like a ladder with three different rungs that can support robots at three different scoring heights. The core scoring element this year is fuel, a roughly six inch yellow foam sphere. There is no holding limit on fuel this year, so you can carry as much as you can fit inside your robot. Note that this year, the hub is quite a bit easier to shoot into than a lot of goals we've had in the past. This makes the challenge really shooting as many balls as you can as fast as you can. When fuel is scored in the hub, it is immediately counted and redistributed back into the center of the field. That means game pieces are recycled and there's no upper limit on scoring. A big part of the challenge this year is some of the rule constraints that are applied to robots. The number one thing that sticks out to me is the rule that robots can not extend above 30 inches at any time during the match. Robot frame perimeter size has also decreased from 120 inches to 110 inches, meaning robots will be smaller on average than in prior years. The decreased robot weight constraints from Reefscape remain in effect, so you're still capped at that 115 pounds up to 135 pounds for your bumpers. Additionally, robots may only extend out of one side of their frame perimeter at one time, in a rule very similar to 2023's charged up extension rules. Note that while you cannot extend above 30 inches based on the rules in this game, the trench is set at 22 inches, almost a third shorter than your total max height. So if you want to put as many balls in your robot as possible, but still fit under the trench, your robot may need to change the size of its hopper throughout the match. If you choose not to go through the trench, you will have to pass over the bumps on either side of the hub. This means you have to take careful consideration about picking and modifying your drivetrain for this year's game. Teams should focus on their robot volume and making sure you beat both the challenging rules this year and also maximize that fuel storage in your robot. Returning from 2006's Aim High are shifts. During certain periods of the match, your hub will become active or inactive, meaning that you can't score into it during an inactive period and you can only score into it during active periods. Autonomous has increased by five seconds. This means this year's matches are two minutes and 40 seconds, not two minutes and 30. During Autonomous, both hubs are active for both alliances. That means the entire auto period, any ball you score, will count. Keep in mind that the winner of Autonomous will go second when the shifts start alternating between each hub. So it is to your advantage to score the most points in Autonomous, beating your other alliance to give yourself the most time to prepare for your first offense shift. There's also a 10 second transition period after Autonomous to catch those last balls from auto and also give the losers of Autonomous a chance to recover, collect some balls, and not be so far behind after their first shift. Following the transition period, hubs oscillate between active and inactive. One alliance's hub will be active while the other alliance's is inactive. This will stay true until the final 30 seconds of the match where both hubs become active during endgame. But keep in mind, you also have endgame tasks. So it doesn't mean that you're gonna be shooting that whole time. There are no safe zones this year outside of the tower during the end game phase only. Keep in mind that you'll have to dynamically change what you're doing based on what shift you're in. So if you can't score, what are you gonna choose to do? Are you gonna play defense? Are you gonna collect fuel for your next scoring phase? There are innumerable different strategies that can be applied to this game. And I really don't know which is gonna work out on top. During Autonomous, your alliance has two main goals. One, score as many points as possible to overcome your opposing alliance's score and make it so that they have to go first when the shifts start occurring. Your second goal is to get as many tower points as you can. Up to two robots can climb that L1 rung on the climbing structure, and those points will count towards your climbing ranking point in endgame. 
keep in mind that if you choose to climb the climbing structure in auto, you will have to get off of it to continue playing the game afterward. Teams cannot completely cross the center line of the field, just like in 2024's Crescendo. That means you can get a little bit over it, still collect some balls, but make sure that you're not fully crossing that line and racking up fouls for your alliance. But if you choose to travel over the bump in auto, you may lose a lot of the information that your robot regularly has on just flat carpet as you travel into that center third of the field. When a robot travels over the bump, your wheels will be spinning in air while not necessarily contacting ground. That means you have different wheel speeds depending on which wheels are in contact and which wheels aren't in contact. And by the time you land on the other side, you may have wildly different odometry than you would normally expect on purely flat ground. Vision systems will be important for determining your robot's location once you've reached the other side. And if you want to get back to score, that'll be a real challenge for teams this year. Don't worry, you don't have to enter the center of the field during autonomous. There are two different places you can acquire additional fuel for your auto mode, the outpost and the depot. The outpost is your human player station this year, and the human player can directly feed fuel into your robot by opening the door and letting the fuel drop in. The depot is a steel berm protected area containing an additional 24 fuel that you can pick up from the floor. Both of these places will be advantageous for teams as they seek to score as many fuel as possible in autonomous and also get those fuel into the center to make collection easier in later phases. Teleoperated mode will be highly dynamic this year as your alliance collaborates to launch as much fuel into the hub as they possibly can during their active shift. But as soon as that shift ends, you're going to have to sprint out and take on different tasks, playing defense, collecting fuel, and preventing your opponents from scoring in any way that you can during your inactive shift. You can shoot fuel into your third from the center third, you just can't score it in the goal. So, feeding strategies may be viable this year. Remember, there is only one type of game piece this year. That means that you and your opponents are fighting over the exact same quantity of fuel. The more you hold, the less they have access to. In the final 30 seconds of the match, teams climb the tower. The tower has three rungs to help robots climb. The scoring criteria for each rung is as follows. For L1, you simply need to be off the ground and touching only the powder-coated part of the structure. For level two, your bumpers must be above rung one, and for level three, your bumpers must be above rung two. A vertical ladder challenge like this is quite a difficult design challenge, so don't leave this to the last second if you're planning on getting to level three. Also consider that your partners also need to climb on the same structure, and fitting three on that level three rung it's going to be quite the challenge for just about anyone. You're allowed to be touching the uprights of the tower as you climb and when you're in their climb position. These are here to help you make your climb easier. Don't completely ignore them when designing your climbing mechanism. Pay special attention to the rules regarding climbing, particularly that 30 inch extension limit. You never want to be taller than 30 inches at any point in this process. There are six ranking points available in Rebuilt. Three ranking points are awarded for the winning alliance, one to each alliance if it's a tie. Additionally, you can earn ranking points by scoring fuel in the hub. At 100 fuel, you're in one ranking point, and at 360 fuel, you're in a second. You also get a ranking point if you get 50 points from your tower. Keep in mind that those auto points do count and are worth more than just climbing L1 during the endgame. Points are as follows. 15 points for climbing L1 in auto, which two robots can do. 10 points for climbing L1 in endgame. 20 for L2, and 30 for L3. That means that technically, you can score this ranking point without ever climbing above level one. But it also means that if you get three robots on that level three rung, that's 90 points at the end of your game, in addition to whatever you scored in auto. Meaning you can get a total of, doing quick math, 120 points on just the tower. There's obviously a lot happening in this year's game. And it's tough to keep track of just what you should be doing as a team when your robot hits the carpet in March. My recommendation for this year's game is to keep in mind your resources and figure out which roles in Rebuilt you think you can build a robot best for. Don't try to do everything. There is a lot on this year's field to worry about. Also keep in mind that this year's real challenge is hidden in the details. This packaging challenge is one of the hardest FRC has ever produced. Fitting all these mechanisms, your intake, your indexing device, your launcher, and the climbing mechanism, as well as being able to fit 
either under the trench or over the bump, that is a lot to pack in a significantly reduced space this year. Not to mention, you also have to fit in as many balls as you possibly can to score them. So pick your battles and strategically avoid taking on too much challenge in building your robot this year. Don't dismiss the challenge of indexing this many balls into your launcher. It tripped a lot of teams up in 2017 and 2020, and it will probably trip people up again this year in 2026. With modern motors and motor controllers, it's much easier to launch this many balls. The new problem area will be getting that many balls to your launcher. Overall, this year's challenge is complex and exciting. There'll be a lot of different strategies that teams apply in rising to the top of the competition this year, and we're excited to see all of them. We'll see you all at the competition, and that's how you play Rebuilt. Thank you.